it took a couple of years, but I finally found a 22 caliber version of the Crossman Guide Hawk NP. I found the uh, 177 caliber version, new old stock, PA, I think, I forget. But uh, I found this one, the 22 caliber version used in Lincoln, Nebraska. And it just came in this morning. Been sitting forever waiting for the camera battery pack to charge up and get ready and everything. But anywho, let's start out with opening this thing. Whoa. Big box for what I know the size of the rifle is. Oh, I did it again. They smashed the dang size of the thing where I can't get it open. Can't get the knife in there without. Put the labels and everything on the bottom where the bottom of the rifle is. Oh. Oh. Folks, you all have to stop using clear packing tape on the bubble wrap. I can't see it to get it off. It just bunches up in your hand and makes like a plastic rope you can't fucking pull. Let me take that over the end. Why do they torture me with all this damn, use a whole roll of packing tape on every rifle? I'm going to be here for another 75 hours just trying to get the stupid thing out of the bubble wrap. Seems a big pile of bubble wrap sitting here. Fucking moron. 
people have got to learn to think about what it's going to be like for a poor sap that's got to unwrap a damn thing. Stop using so much mask, I mean, packing tape. It's clear, you can't see it. You've got the thing stuck down where it literally won't unwrap. It's stuck to the Picatinny rail. Well, I'm not kidding, that shit won't come off at all unless I, I have to cut the stock all the pieces trying to get the damn tape to come off. Sometimes I have to tell you guys. Just, it just makes a big fat pain in the ass and pissing off the customer when you overwrap the damn thing and you can't get the damn stuff off. Okay. Yep, rust mixed with bluing. Chipped right there. Couple of little places. Oh, and uh, you know what? Look at the wood on this one. That's all gouged right there. So. It's got a sticker on it. $59.99 BB Gun Sporty. Well, what is it? $59.99 in the store, and he charged me $99.99 online. But anyway, looks to me in pretty nice shape. The wood on this one's a little darker, I think, than the 177 cal I got over there. I'll show you. Got a couple of scopes put away. I gotta go through it. Simmons 4x32. I gotta take off my oldest 760 up there and put the Weaver pencil scope on from the 70s. Two of those. But anyway, I'll have to pick one of the scopes I got left to put on this one. Scratched right there, but not too bad. A little dirt in the cross, but it's so I need to brush out some. A little nick on the chuckle right there. One diamond got nicked. And it's got stuff and scraped right there, and a little nick right here. Double set trigger. It looks like a double set trigger, but the, the little one's the safety. Grab a cloud, Barman. That's been rubbed with oil at some point. Oh, that's another one, by the way, while I'm thinking about it. I use the red oil. Number to rub on, but the one's got the Teflon a little bit of, to rub on the wood. The Teflon soak, soaks in with that red oil. Right Does a pretty good job. Water to be up and on off. And I use Blistol on the blue metal parts in the last longer. It's, it's sitting on a, you know, on a rack. What? There we go. Even for 99 bucks instead of 50. That's in pretty darn nice shape. But 
there's rust coming up through the river, you see it's all kind of speckled like. There's rust in this open building as it hasn't been oiled down on us. So I'll use the Pro 3 gun oil. It soaks in three to five times better than the previous one I use on the wood. I'm going to get that cleaned up for so I can put some bowl style on it that seals it while I'm going to sit on the rack and keeps it nice and really nice and shiny looking. Like you see, I'm going to show pictures of my CO2 rifles over here. But, that's the tool too. Well, that's great. The guy didn't say he's charging, because that's probably why it's only 60 bucks at the store. The damn thing didn't shoot and nobody could it. Now I got charged at 128 for this thing shipping it all. It's broken inside. is nice and everything, but there's no way you can apply it. Now the lever might have came off inside of some of the pieces. I got to spend time and money fixing it. I finally find one that put $100 in the damn thing. See, even with the safety off or the safety on, it's not wanting to move past the first, end of the first stage position, so the second stage is messed up. So, the trigger mechanism in there is messed up, and I have to see if the, the Cocking lever, the also called the anti bear trap lever, is isn't uh, jammed up, broke loose, or whatever, because there's no tension on it at all. So we'll have to pull the action out of the stock and have a look at it. I wish I could go outside to shoot though, it would be nice to set up at 25 yards across the backyard, it would be easy. Okay, well, the one with the scope is the 177, this is obviously the new one is the 22 version of the Guide Hawk Nitro Piston, or MP for short. 
got a center point 3 to 9 by 40 AO mill dot on the 177 version here, which the stock is a bit, the stock on the 177 here is a bit lighter than this one. This one has a bit more golden brown to it that I, that I kind of like. It just burns me that, oh, cleaned and tested. Yeah, he tested it, found out it didn't work, and didn't say nothing. It's like, buyer go to hell, not buyer beware. They just, I let him know, too. But when I left feedback on eBay for the guy, I told him about it. I don't care if you don't like it. And he's not going to tell me a broken transit or something. That's an internal part that's surrounded by a lot of wood there. Then you can't damage that just by rattling it around. You had to get in there and mess with something you didn't know nothing about. So. Yeah. Got some work to do. And, uh, oh, I also got, also ordered a couple of uh, those Amish made buffalo hide slings. I ordered two more of those. And uh, I'll, so these things will have matching slings too. I thought that'd be kind of cool. So I'll use this this padded Allen uh, sling on something else. I don't know which one yet, but I guess that's it for this time. So, good Lord willing, the creeks don't rise. We'll see you again. So, keep your gun oiled, your powder dry. Hello, hello. Look around the room a little bit here. Got my my old Western paint painter prints up, and Buffalo Bill one there is from 1909. It's a colorized black and white picture they made into a poster. That had to cost some money back 120 years ago. CO2 collection. And I rearranged this over here, put the powder burners in the back. That's my son's uh, 22 Crossman Optimus there. And I got four of my Winchesters over there. With the one on the far end is the Repeat Air 1077. That's my seventh CO2 Crossman rifle. But looking from right here, you can kind of see how shiny that ballistol makes the barrels when they're sitting on a rack like that. And I just got all that bubble wrap. Jeez. Hang my hats over there. I still got one on my head and the other one there. That makes six. And... 760s over there. And a couple more of the 760 related ones up there on top of the two German rifles. And the open spot there is going to be for the two guide hawks so they can sit next to each other. So just clean up the mess I just got through making here and I got a lot more room to walk around in here now.